Hello, and welcome to this episode of Asomatis. I am Jason. And I'm John. And uh, so for this episode, we are going to be heading right into the heart of what the show is, and we're going to be talking about music. Yes. So um, I guess we can start at the beginning, so Mm -hmm. to speak, and talk about what is the first music or the first evidences of music, which would be with pre-humans, especially Neanderthals. Yep. Um, So there was a bone flute uh, that was discovered in France, I believe, or it might have been Germany. Uh, Don't quote me on that. Uh, but it was discovered in a cave where Neanderthals lived. And it is believed to be the oldest musical instrument ever found, dating about, I believe it was like 43,000 years ago. Um, and so it's very interesting that we find that, you know, there are evidence of music even before, well, Humans existed 43,000 years ago, but music existed with our pre-human ancestors as the Neanderthals. So that begs the question of how far back did music go? Well, and I'm sure it's just always been there. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it just depends on what you call music, organized sound, you know, that's pleasant to the ear. And I'm sure birds have been whistling their tunes and that have been communicating in ways that have sounded as they do pretty much nowadays yeah. forever. So, I mean, really, what I think about humans, it seems like we are, for lack of a better word, like mimickers. Mm-hmm. And so we mimic our surroundings, and that's kind of how we've developed communication as well. We kind of take what we like from other species, from our environment, and we apply that to ourselves to advance ourselves or just make life easier for us. Exactly. Well, and that's, you said one super interesting thing about, you know, birds that, you know, they basically sing and uh, that would, I would assume that that would be a type of music, the way that birds chirp and tweet. And um, there is obviously evidence within not just humans, but there's evidence in you know, chimpanzees uh, will take sticks and bang them on logs in rhythm. Yep. Uh, we have whale, whale songs, dolphins, uh, all types of different creatures make, uh, we'll call it rhythmic communication. Yeah. Uh, that could be considered music. Um, so, like when we talk about the bone flute just being the first musical instrument ever found, I would say that um, even the earliest human ancestors were probably making some type of rhythm at least, uh, you know, all the way back to the first ancestors of Australopithecus afarensis, Homo habilis, um, Homo erectus, all of those different species that existed um and what homo australopithecus uh africanus or afarensis they go back almost like five million years right so uh music has definitely been around for a very long time and in that time it um how should i put it 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 became part of who we are it came became part of us and it is something that is innate within our DNA. I think it's part of, yeah, exactly, every aspect of our lives. When, when we started making music first, you know, mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands, millions of years ago, whatever, what were we making it for? You know, what was the purpose? Was it strictly just for creativity, entertainment? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I've, I've watched videos about how it was used, you know, mm-hmm. certain signals, certain whistles or certain you know whatever they use certain songs melodies would convey a specific message like you know go this way like the for hunting in particular Mm -hmm. a certain sound they make okay the kill has happened now come here to help 
feel and dress it, whatever, you know, or I'm in danger. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, something I've thought is once humans gained the ability to har- uh, harness fire mm-hmm. and then we were, you know, cooking our meat. So we were yeah. digesting it better. We were absorbing the nutrients better, which very, very much aided to the growth of our brains. You know, we're sitting around fire, and so we're also having more time for leisure time, if you will. And so I'm sure that's when creativity really started to flourish. And I'm guessing alongside agricultural revolution where Mm -hmm. we were able to kind of stay put instead of going and uh, constantly on the move, hunter-gatherer kind of lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Once we were able to kind of establish ourselves and stay in one area for our lives... And our food was just in that general area, you know, started uh, domesticating animals. Mm -hmm. Then that's when our creativity, I believe, was able to flourish. We were able to concentrate on other things, so. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, And that's a, that's such a deep question, uh, what you were talking about there is, you know, what was the, uh, I guess the best way to describe it, what was the integration of music into uh, who we are. Uh, so ancestors, our pre-human ancestors, you know, did they use rhythm to begin to mimic their world, like you said, and then did they find that, you know, those rhythms and those tones, those types of things began to have significance to them? And maybe ritualistic, because obviously right. when you when you think of music and the evolution of it, uh, I think religion and music always went hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, how was it that they, you know, made that connection between these abstract thoughts of religion and some the higher power, you know, mysticism and music, those things. Like rarely do you ever find those things that, that where they're not connected, especially in the beginnings. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, music had more of an effect on us in this abstract thinking that we, we evolved. Music definitely had something to do with it. So it's something that more that wasn't just there. It was something that affected us on a, on a very deep level. Um, and something that began, I'm sure it was passed down. Music was passed down the same as information was and knowledge and, and those types of things. Well, that's actually a great point because I mean, this is, I mean, it's, it's definitely along the same lines, what we're talking about, but to help my younger kids learn how to spell their name, Mm -hmm like we'd make up little songs to tunes that were already kind of you know like children's nursery rhyme tunes mm-hmm. that were already um whatever known well known and then you just throw in like spelling their name to that tune and they picked it up quite quickly when I was in you know elementary school it's like I remember the multiplication rap mm-hmm. and that's how I learned how to <laughs> multiply you know and so it's I'm sure these these tales and these myths and legends were probably passed down by song at one point, Uh, you know, they started doing that, especially because, and it was such a, I feel like it was such an, uh, like ingrained part of society Mm -hmm. as well, because they weren't able to write down music notes. That's kind of a more, not necessarily modern, but it's definitely closer in our timeline than, you know, it's only like probably within a thousand or 2000 years at the very most. Yeah where you're able to write down notes and then have people learn that. For instance, uh, another video, you know, all I do is watch nerdy videos, but um, they were talking about like Gregorian chants mm-hmm. in the Catholic church. Yeah. And they didn't really have note, you know, notation for that as well. So it's literally, I heard you spent like 10 years of your life learning these chants and these songs to be able to build up and memorize the repertoire to be able to perform those and finally when they started making the blobs so people could learn them and pass them down like that mm-hmm. that's when it really started, kind of started taking off where more people were able to yeah. get that information and knowledge so exactly so um I, again 
very deep point about the connection of music and learning. Mm -hmm. So it's something, again, it goes, when I, when I say that music is in our DNA, it's in everything that we are. Yep. Um, it, it just goes to show that music coupled with information, you retain it better and you understand it better with mm -hmm. music. You know, you talked about the, the, uh, math the what was do you call it like the multiplication the multi rap. yeah the multiplication <laughs> rap yeah. I, I unfortunately i missed that one in school but um you know the most obvious and, and basic one is your abc song right you know we all learned abcs to singing a tune yep. and that helped us to remember and um yeah. helped us with pronunciation and vowels and all of those types of things mm -hmm. so you know, getting into a somatus and what what our what our goals are with this with this program, and you know why is it that music is at least in our opinion one of the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universe, yeah. or well, we'll call it unlocking the the secrets of existence. Yeah, and that's because music is. Um, it's something easy to understand. It's something fairly easy comparatively uh, to other things to quantify. It's easy to um, look at it in a very objective, you know, in a very objective view because it's something that is all around us. It's something that is, uh, it's simple. It, 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 it doesn't have too many moving parts if if you understand what i'm saying there it is what it is right and um so to un using music and sound and you know kind of like what are what we've talked about before music is a wave music is something that is part of everyday life and everyday existence and it occurs naturally so it's a perfect it's a perfect place to start mm -hmm. when you try to deconstruct your world and you try to deconstruct your existence. Music's perfect to start with because it has all of these elements. Mm -hmm. So, well, and like you said, I mean, existence, that's, that's definitely everything, you know, mm -hmm. to us. And when we talk about the universe and we've talked about some of the things we're about to talk about, in this episode we've talked about in previous episodes but i feel like they're things that need to be constantly touched upon for people to yeah. have them at the four thoughts in their four thoughts because everything is mathematical it seems like everything mm -hmm. is very you know there's no there's no coincidences everything is very structured in a way that mm -hmm. it seems like it was definitely planned and so mathematics is our way of understanding um, the universe, if you will, existence. And I feel like what music is, is just mathematics kind of personified through emotions. And that's why, I've, or I don't, maybe I didn't say that right, but I feel like what you were saying, how music is a good way to start or a good place mm -hmm. to start is because music is very mathematical. Yeah. And it's easy for people to understand, even if, maybe they'll understand music theory per se, you know, because that can get that can get deep, whatever. But it's like mm -hmm. you hear a piece of music, and the emotions that it arises inside of you, those are pretty straightforward and mm -hmm. you know easy to decipher for the most part. And so that's why it's such an important aspect of our lives. And you know, I think it definitely should be, mm, I guess, uh, more prioritized in school and family life. And I guess that's really where it comes to religion is because I believe, mm -hmm. I believe these religions and churches have found the musical elements that invoke certain emotions and mm -hmm. feelings within us. And so, for lack of a better word, they exploit those mm -hmm. to get people to feel a certain way. And that's been a very, you know, that's been a very foundational aspect of 
religion and spirituality and mm-hmm. people trying to grow their organizations and music is definitely at the forefront of all that. So sure. Sure. I think, I think I liked what you said at the beginning where music is the emotional expression of mathematics. I think that that is totally valid. Um, I think it's super interesting. And again, where, where we're, we dive into what we are and who we are by deconstructing our experience, deconstructing, you know, what it is that we do on a daily basis and, and what is this experience and the, the absolute gigantic influence music has on that. Um, you know, you can, I remember when I was taking a musical theory class where it straight out said, okay, if you want to have uh, a happy tune, you know, an energetic tune, then you have to go with the major scales. But then if you want to have a, a sad, you know, a tune that instantly affects your listener in, in such a way, then you should go with these minor scales. Mm-hmm. And I remember that always hit me in a very, you know, how is it that music, something so simple, something that um, anybody can do, even, you know, different animals and, and non-human uh, beings, such as, you know, whales and chimpanzees and birds that they can affect you on that type of a level just by producing notes. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's nothing that you can really do about it. I mean, you can understand it. You can say, oh, well, that is a C minor scale and C minor scales invoke these types of emotions. But that's as far as you can go. It's almost like, I think that it shows um, how very... What, how, how much we really are plugged into our existence. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I guess that's the best way to put it, that we're plugged in. Um, we are not separate from, we are, we're not separate from this experience. We're not, you know, this little ball of energy floating alone in this bigger, wider sea of, of existence but that we are connected to everything around us yep. in, in a deeper way than we are, than we're aware of. Definitely. And uh, again, music is a great stepping stone, a great first, um, the first evidences that show us that, you know, cause music can, you know, suck you into a situation and it can make you feel an environment. It can make you do crazy things. Uh, You know, I love the example of the 1980s where, you know, all of the, uh, all of the, the mothers were blaming rock and roll on the bad behavior of their children. Mm. I don't know if you were, you were old enough to remember that. Maybe you were. I'm thinking of like uh, that movie Detroit Rock City, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Detroit Rock City is a great example of it, mm-hmm. where uh, you know the mom was like blaming Kiss for all of the bad behavior of her son, and they and could have contributed to it. You yeah, know? who knows? <laughs> I I think that music definitely um, definitely has an effect on people, and, right. and anybody who says that it doesn't, well, you're you're denying you're something that is very very obvious right um you know you think about and we'll use simple examples we'll use like different war movies and sports and you know dances in high school all of these things use music to motivate humans national anthems yeah national anthems um, and to spark patriotism right um you know, you think of sports, you know, I don't, I haven't participated in, in sports since college, but, uh, you know, I remember when I would get being prepared for a, for a race or a meet, you know, you always hyped yourself up with music. Yep. You, you pick very specific 
music that spoke to you and got you in that mind frame and prepared you to go out and do your best. And I would dare say that if it wasn't for, if, if there was a meet where like I forgot my music, I probably didn't compete as well in that meet as I did preparing with music before the meet because the meet really got me focused and in tuned and got me pumped up to do what I needed to do. Yep. So, you know, again, we're deep diving into the true nature and the effect that music has on us in, in existence and in the way that we actually physically perform in the world that we live in. Yeah. And I think about, uh, you know, for instance, thinking about like the revolutionary war Mm -hmm. and I'm sure it's been happening well before that, but it's like when they, when they're marching, when the armies are marching, you know, you got the flutes and you got the drums and that's what's keeping people in pace. That's what keep, keeps people yeah. in line. You know, like when the drums stop, when the flutes stop, that's when you stop marching. Yeah. And I'm sure before battles, you know, they were banging the drums and they were trying to just get people, like you said, mm -hmm. hyped up, get ready for the battle. Yeah. And so it's, it's such a form of communication, but it's not just to convey information it's also to convey the emotion mm -hmm. you know like the getting hyped up aspect i mean it's just so true because you want to be able to match well you want to be listening to a music that portrays and uh, whatever the right word is you know puts off the energy that you're looking for for your particular event or situation mm -hmm. and so you know if I, I don't really watch much professional sports, but even down to like the high school level, everyone's doing it. Everyone has yep. their Bluetooth headphones yep. on and they're listening to their own music, which, you know, whatever, when it comes to that, that's a, that's a very brand new phenomenon. But yeah. what it's doing for these athletes, I'm sure, is just allowing them to push everything else out and just kind of go inward and concentrate mm -hmm. on their thoughts, on what they feel like they need to be doing. Yeah, I, I assume that's what they're doing. That's what I would be doing, you know, is just yeah. being able to push out the press or whatever, you know, people talking, you know, whatever, smack talking, whatever you want to say. And so music, it just, it definitely allows you to internalize everything. Yeah. And that's why some songs have such a negative effect. I've heard of songs mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of a rough subject, but it's like people who have committed suicide they're found with mm -hmm. a certain song put on repeat yeah you know what i mean well, and so I, I think also people that have committed mass murder i mean how many okay. how many mass murder incidents uh have had a major music factor you know everybody from uh nine inch nails to marilyn manson have been blamed for motivating mass mass hmm mass murder through their music as Charles Manson uh, obviously used the Beatles music like Helter Skelter um, and other songs to uh, control the group that he was using and to use that music to make his uh, prophecies of you know an apocalypse so um, you know he used that type of music and you know, that group to uh, basically get his followers to commit mass murder. Mm -hmm. um, and the Beatles themselves, even though they are a group that is, um, you know, we can't call them classical because, you know, they're not, they're not that far back, but they're definitely the era of maybe my parents and, um, they were definitely more innocent than some of the music that is played today, but they didn't escape that, um, you know, that negativity and that dark side of their music where um, they spawned a, a hippie generation that was taking drugs that, um, you know, had their Charles Manson, had their, you know, our generation had, you know, our, you know, mass murders, but Columbine Columbine, and a couple of the different school shootings where, you know, the kids were listening to, you know, different groups that we've already kind of yep. talked about. But, um, 
you know, it just goes to show that music has this long range and this, you know, it, it, it can be good. It can get us up in the morning and get us going and get us pumped mm -hmm. or music can make us depressed. Music can make us have weird ideas and music can make us angry. Music can, you know, there's all these different things that music can do. Well, I mean, like think about Bob Marley, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, most of his songs are just, they're very upbeat. They're very uh -huh. happy for the most part, you know, and it was on a movie. I don't know if we we're really supposed to be telling movie titles, whatnot, but sure. um, Why not? like I Am Legend, you know, that was a big part of, mm -hmm. that's a big part of the character's, um, you know, dialogue and a lot of it saying that mm -hmm. Bob Marley thought that you could just inject happy, positive music into people and cure a lot of the woes of society and yeah. you know, global conflicts and all that and so really is true you know you think of songs what a wonderful mm -hmm. world and they do really just make you they, they almost put you in that position like you can find yourself like in that music video you know or like if there even is one i'm saying like you can almost like create a music video in your head yeah to that music you know i see friends shaking hands you know saying how do you do and it's just it's definitely a message that i like to hear and when it comes to all these other messages that are being put out there you definitely want to be able to balance what you're ingesting if you will mm -hmm. so yeah exactly and you know it's interesting where you you brought up like healing mm -hmm. and you know because when you look at some of the more traditional peoples that believe in shaman, that believe in, you know, how we can be healed. Um, and we don't even have to just look at traditional. I mean, look at, you know, Hinduism and Buddhism, you know, the, the Om, that right. they do that because they believe it's healing them. Mm -hmm. The Om. That frequency. That, that they're frequency. Creating. Right. Um, and there is evidence that says that it works, mm -hmm. that people do have higher um, rates of recovery when listening to these types of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so music therapy. Yeah. Music therapy. So. Um, music can calm the savage beast. Uh, we have, again, what is the deeper meaning? What is it that we can learn from these things that are very, very obvious and, and I dare say common within the human experience. Um, I think about like, uh, I think about music in movies over mm -hmm. the years yeah. and the certain, certain chords that you can use to invoke mm -hmm. different emotions. Right. And then I wonder dating way farther back than that, you know, was it humans that were expressing themselves through music? You know, because these musical tones and frequencies and these musical combinations have they've always existed, right? Yeah. And it's just like humans discovering them and applying them. Mm -hmm. And so is it the music that's driving our emotions? Is it our emotions that's driving the music? Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, that might be a little too much chicken and the egg, right? But um, I'm just wondering because I think about Hollywood's existence and, you know, we're kind of get back into the movies and music and all that. And it's, I just, I feel like how it's kind of skewed the way we look at relationships or things of that nature. And so I just wonder, you know, how much, how much is it us shaping these things such as movies and the music we put out, or is it, you know, is it the other way around? Are they shaping yeah. us? And, you know, we kind of evolve in a certain mm -hmm. way, depending on what media we've intaken over the generations, you know, whatever. Oh, well, exactly. And that, I think what, what you're talking about is the heart of a somatist and what we're looking at is, you know, what is this direct correlation of music and the human experience? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would dare, and I'll go out on a limb because that's kind of what we're, what we're here to do. Yep do Swing is away. that is why I believe that music is a great evidence that what we are experiencing is not our true form of existence. And the reason why is because we are, we are in an existence where everything is directly related. 
and everything is directly related through waves, yeah. energy, and um, so we're like a radio. It's probably the best way to describe what we are. We are a radio. We receive these waves. We receive this stimulus or, you know, this energy that is coming into our bodies, our minds, and depending on how we interpret that frequency depends on the product that we produce, mm -hmm. which is our behavior and our experience. And so if you can take something as simple as music and you know that you can uh, put A, B, and C notes together and you can effectively influence the way that somebody perceives their reality, then that tells me that we are in a type of experience that is not 100% real or at least not what we perceive it yes, to be it's not what we perceive it to be like you said i mean we're the radio but we're yes. also the transmission tower as well yeah, you know what i mean we're, we're everything which makes me yeah. kind of brings back to our point where you know are we shaping our environment is our mm -hmm. environment shaping us you know and of course it's mm -hmm. a combination of both but yeah. i feel like humans and we've said this in previous episodes where it's basically we are the universe basically acknowledging mm -hmm. and exploring yes. our own existence or our own consciousness and so everything that we create yeah is almost just a an extension of ourselves yeah you know like the radio you know we mm -hmm. are we are ourselves transmission towers that can mm -hmm. put out energy and you know whether or not esp is you know i don't know i'm sure there's something to it I have not developed my sure. brain to be able to communicate like that, but I, I don't think that there's anything in this existence that is impossible. Uh -huh. You know, I know there's certain laws like gravity. We have yet to learn how to physically ourselves uh, d defy that law, mm -hmm. but we've also created birds to fly in. Mm -hmm. because we looked up and we see the birds flying and we say, you know, we wish we could do that. And yeah. eventually it happened. Yeah. And so everything we see, everything we do is just extensions of either ourselves or what we wish we could be. Yeah. And that's what kind of drives us. And obviously it's all energy, like you said. And so if everything's mm -hmm. connected mathematically, like we've stated before, which it seems to be the case, then who's that, who's that designer, you know, who's that, yeah. Who's that engineer that put everything together? You know, are we just mm -hmm. an experiment? Are we just a program <laughs> put into a bigger, you know, yeah. we're just a hard drive, you know, like an external hard drive from somewhere else. I'm not really sure I'm really trying to go with that, but no, yeah, kind of get my gist, right? I totally understand what you're saying. Uh, I think that the, the positive side of all of that is, you know, because you're talking about, well, what are we? Are we... You know, our, it's almost like, what is our purpose? What is, you know, are we, we're not a mistake or just a test. Right. We are, um, we're definitely something very important. Mm -hmm. um, I doubt very much that this is just a way to pass the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We're not just. We're it's just, a step. Yeah. It's this a is step. a step and it has purpose and it has meaning. Uh, now, what that purpose and meaning is, I think that is very, a very complicated topic and something that, yeah. like I said in some of the other um, episodes, I don't think that we're really capable of understanding mm -hmm. at this point. Not right no. now. And it's not our purpose to understand. It's right. Our purpose is to be here and do the things that we do. Be present. Yes. Be here. Be present. Mm -hmm. Live this life. And... Uh, and learn, grow, create. Those are the purposes of what this is. Cooperate. Yeah. It doesn't matter that things are... Um, I, I believe that we definitely have free will within a closed circuit. <laughs> okay. If that makes any sense. we, Our world around us is... They're... they're you know, we have 
situations that are given to us, situations that um, that there's no way that we can change them. For example, there's no way to change the parents that you're born to. There's no way to change, right. uh, you know, sickness, and there's no way to change tragedy. There's no way to change you know, difficult things and pain are going to happen in our life. But that is the reason why we're here is to have these opportunities to have these experiences. We're, and we're learning how to deal with some of those things yeah. like sickness, you know, I mean, yeah. but it, it really comes down to what makes, what makes us operate yeah. optimally and what do we need to do mm -hmm. to maintain the yeah. homeostasis with yeah. inside of our own, mm -hmm. <laughs> our own universes that we are. Exactly. Cause I mean, what and the I, firing I, neurons in our brains yeah. is like the same as the amount of galaxies yeah. out in the universe. And we are a universe in yeah, ourselves. It is. And I don't ever want to sound negative about, you know, like when I said, you can't choose your parents. Maybe you have great, wonderful, the best parents ever. Right. Uh, some people might not have the best parents, mm -hmm. but all of that, um, all of that has meaning and purpose. Right. And I think that we kind of already talked about these things in another one of our episodes. But, you know, if if you are angry that let's say that you were born to really bad abusive parents, there's that is not the reason why you are unhappy in this life. The reason you're that's an excuse. You were, you were put on this earth to have bad parents and to overcome that. Maybe you were put on this planet and this earth to help them become better. Nice. Um, I think we talked about the levels before. Yeah. I don't, um, I don't know if that was necessarily yeah. recorded, but we've had some definitely I think that we, didn't we I think that we did on our, we first, may have. on our first one. I, maybe, maybe we didn't, but I'm sure we'll get around, back around to right. it. Right. Yep. Definitely. Um, but music... Just like music has different levels, we, we go up a scale. Mm, and on those nice. different levels on that scale, you have different ranges of emotion. And mm. these different levels and these different scales from high to low, at least the way that we define it, right. um, it has all this different meaning. And that is a great allegory for life. Mm -hmm. We have different levels. Different levels mean different things to different people. But it all is the same. It's, it's just a progression on the same thing. And that's exactly what this existence, at least to me, it is. We have different levels and we all need to strive to reach those levels that are the better levels or at least the, the more comfortable levels, whatever the, you want to look at it. And... We need to try to be happy. We need to create. We need to find ourselves and be honest yep. and truthful. And music is a great representation of that when you take the time to meditate and be quiet and be still and experience the world as it is around you. Absolutely. I, I like guess, that. I guess that's my little rant. Good. I liked it. Well, what do you think, man? That felt good. Yeah, it felt good. Uh, unfortunately, man, I wish this, these are subjects that we could probably go on forever about. Yep, definitely. And we will. We will. We will. But uh, yeah, I think it's a good one. Cool. Good one. I think we covered a lot of great topics. Um, we want to thank you for listening to Somatus. Yes, thank you. And uh, hopefully, if there's any topics you want us to cover, please let us know in the comments below. Yeah. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Yep, all those things. And uh, we'll, we'll catch you again on our next episode. Yep, have a good one. Mm -hmm.